सर्वधर्मस्वूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम परात्मानमेक जगती जमाध्यम निरीह निराकार ओंकार वेद्यम यो जायते पाल्यते येन विश्व समीशं भजे लीयते यत्र विश्व हरिओं तत्स हरिओं तत्स हरिओं तत्स Swami Nityasthananda Ji Maharaj My pranams to Maharaj My pranams to revered Swami Shantathananda Ji Maharaj <coughs> My pranams to revered Swami Nikhilesh Manan Ji Maharaj And Swami Bodhamayan Ji Maharaj is yet to come And my pranams to him also <coughs> So dear devotees, today we have assembled here on a very important occasion that is the 125th anniversary of Ramakrishna Math Chennai <coughs> and it is also noteworthy that ramakrishna mission also has concluded its celebration of its 125th anniversary so it is a very proud moment for all of us who are associated with ramakrishna math and ramakrishna mission for the exemplary service which this great global institution has rendered to the entire humanity and this ramakrishna math and ramakrishna mission along with i should say the nuns of the ramakrishna sharda mission and sharda math all the lay devotees and all those who have subscribed to ramakrishna bhagadhara all of them put together they comprise the ramakrishna sangha or the ramakrishna order it is a family it's a family consisting of the monks the nuns the lay members all of them who have subscribed to this universal bhavadhara of shri ramakrishna what is this shri ramakrishna's bhavadhara which we are talking about it is the ramakrishna's view of the human being and the way of life which he prescribes it is Ramakrishna's view as well as way of human life which is what we actually refer to as Ramakrishna Bhavadhara Now when we are talking about this Ramakrishna Bhavadhara we should remember that this Bhavadhara is a rare spiritual phenomenon in the world today it's a really a very rare spiritual phenomenon and at the center of this great spiritual phenomenon we have the most attractive personality of shri ramakrishna and when we think about shri ramakrishna obviously certain questions come to our mind what is that we see in shri ramakrishna's life now all of us are devotees of shri ramakrishna what does it mean to meditate on shri ramakrishna 
most of us are here initiated devotees and we have been asked to meditate on Sri Ramakrishna. What do we mean by meditating on Sri Ramakrishna? Or in another way, we should ask, what do we find in Sri Ramakrishna's personality? <coughs> to put it in a very simple way and in a very general way, without going into the philosophical intricacies of the whole matter, what we see in Sri Ramakrishna is, number one, intense love for that which is Satyam. Brahman alone is Satyam. Bhagavan alone is Satyam. And utmost dispassion and revulsion for that which is Mithya utmost revulsion and aversion for world and worldliness. This is what we find in Sri Ramakrishna's life. That mad love for Bhagavan. Why? In the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, every other page we find this very utterance once again and again being repeated. What is that? Bhagavani ak matra vastu, baki sab avastu. In Bengali it is like that. Bhagavan is the only substance. Everything that we see separated from Bhagavan is insubstantial. This is what Sri Ramakrishna wants to say. The eternal Vedantic principle which has been given ages ago. Brahman Satyam, Jagat Mithya. We find Sri Ramakrishna a living demonstration of that. That mad longing for Brahman and Brahman alone, Bhagavan and Bhagavan alone, and at the same time, absolutely no attraction for world and worldliness. Number one. Second thing, what do we find? We find that Sri Ramakrishna keeps before us the wonderful ideal that seeing this very Bhagavan in human beings, we have to serve them. Worshipping Bhagavan in human beings, this is the another beautiful thing which we find demonstrated in Sri Ramakrishna's personality and life. Number three, what do we find in Sri Ramakrishna's personality? The third thing is that this very thing which we refer to as Bhagavan or Brahman, Sri Ramakrishna so shows to us that this reality can be approached in any number of ways. That is why we find in Sri Ramakrishna's life the beautiful, universal, scientific principles of Hindu, Vaidika, Sanatana Dharma exemplified and demonstrated. Literally demonstrated burningly. Now, what do we find in our Vaidika Hindu Sanatana Dharma? It is a very important point. The Vedas tell us that what ultimately exists is, is only one reality. <coughs> and that reality is called as Ekamevadvitiyam Brahma. Brahman alone exists and nothing else. Neha nanasti kinshana. There is absolutely no tinge of multiplicity here. Yatrahi dvaitam iva bhavat. As if there is duality. So the whole crux of the Vedic literature, if you just squeeze it, in that we find that there is only one reality. And this reality called Brahman, it is Saguna as well as Niraguna. It is with names and forms and is, it is also without names and forms. Without names and forms, with names and forms, Niraguna, Saguna, one without a second, transcendent and imminent reality, that is what is referred to as Brahman. It is imminent. It is present in every pore of this creation. And that's why the Vedas teach us 
that everything is divine every living being is divine every man every woman is divine every single creature in this creation is divine and therefore when we serve somebody it is actually speaking the worship of the divine now these are the eternal principles which existed in the vedas the most glorious teaching of the vedas which swami vivekananda says the greatest teaching that the vedas have given to the entire human race what is that teaching it says ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti truth is one sages call it various and it is this very great dictum universal dictum very interestingly even today the world doesn't understand the simple truth which has been lived in this india and india alone it's a most interesting fact this ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti truth is one and sages call it variously and that truth can be approached in so many ways this is a simple truth which only the hindu society the indian society has demonstrated and it is even today happening whereas in the world anywhere else even today the world has to i mean even the acceptance is a distance probability what to talk about understanding so what i want to stress is that in sri ramakrishna we find the living demonstration of these vedic principles so with the advent of sri ramakrishna what has happened is this great revival of the hindu vaidika sanatan dharma has been initiated it's a great movement that's what i said this bhavadhara is a very rare spiritual phenomenon of the modern times and in and through this something global is being accomplished not local not national something universal and global is happening so with sri ramakrishna's advent what is happening is number 1 sri ramakrishna came to breathe fresh new life into the hindu sanatana dharma number 1 secondly sri ramakrishna's advent was for the sake of taking india back to her vedic roots this way this work of taking india back to her vedic roots interestingly it was initiated by bhagwan shri shankaracharya 1200 years ago we know that historical and swami vivekananda says it is that very work which is continuing through ramakrishna bhavadhara that very work of taking this great nation back to the vedic roots and all of us here we should understand one point this is the land of the vedas we should not be having any doubt about this great uh, fact today there is lot of misconception about the identity the true root identity of this great land swami vivekananda hammers this idea again and again so in sri ramakrishna we find this his advent actually marks this great movement to take india back to her vedic roots and with this with the new awakening in the indian indian society what is going to happen is the whole world is going to be benefited so through a prabuddha bharata a prabuddha vishwa is going to be brought about so sri ramakrishna came vivekananda came to awaken india from a deep long slumber which it has been deeply immersed in for the last 1000 years and with the awakening of the true vedika india the whole world is going to be benefited why i am saying this in 1896 swami vivekananda had given a beautiful statement perhaps in uh, in england when he was in england he said that in america i have just started my work i have just raised one or two waves we have to raise a tidal wave the society has to be turned upside down the world has to be given a new civilization what a wonderful utterance in 1896 vivekananda is saying that the world has to be given a new civilization just imagine his foresight he is thinking about a new world of the future whose basic foundation will be spirituality 
the only purpose of India's existence is to provide spirituality to the entire human race. Vivekananda again and again says, this is the main mission of this great country called Bharat. Otherwise, India has got no other purpose. It is existing for this very one thing, to give a new spiritual foundation to the entire human race. Now, one more point and I shall finish my talk. There is not much time. Now, this is the reason why I say that this Sri Ramakrishna Bhavadhara is a rare spiritual phenomenon because it is not sectarian, it is not local, it is not national, it is something which is meant for the entire human race, for the welfare of everybody. So, to be associated with this Bhavadhara is a very great good fortune. This point I had referred to earlier also in some of my talks. But I would like to place this point before all of you dear devotees and students because it is very important. Bhagwan Sri Shankaracharya in his one of his masterpieces he says three things are extremely durlabham in human life. He says durlabham trayamai vaitat devanugra haitukam Marushyatvam, Mumukshutvam, Mahapurusha Samshrayata. Three things are extremely rare in this creation. Durlabham, he doesn't say Sulabham. It is Durlabham, very difficult to get, it's very rare. What are these three things? Birth in a human body, it is very rare. We don't understand the importance of being alive in a human body, number one. Second, the desire for moksha. The desire for liberation, it is even rarer than that. What is Sri Ramakrishna's function? We are all devotees of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna's sole function is what? Khandana Bhava Bandhana. The first three words of the Ramakrishna Stotram, what does it refer to? To put an end, complete end to our sansaritvam. Khandana Bhava Bandhana. He stands for moksha. So this Mumukshutvam is even a rare quality, Shankaracharya says. And the third thing which is even more difficult to get is Mahapurusha Samshraya, the guidance of a Sadguru, the guidance of a true spiritual teacher. This is even more difficult. Now, in the same strain, I would want all the devotees to know one thing. Now this Ramakrishna Bhavdhara, which we have been talking about here, which I stated that it is a rare spiritual phenomenon. Why I am saying it is a very rare spiritual phenomenon? Three things in the same vein we can say is extremely difficult for all of us to get. The first thing is Ramakrishna Bhakti. Devotion for Ramakrishna is not easy because he represents something universal. It is difficult for the human mind to become universal leave or narrowness. When we are subscribing to Ramakrishna's Bhavatara, we have to sacrifice all pettiness, all narrowness, all smallness. It is difficult. Second thing which is more difficult than that is Ramakrishna Sangha Pravesha. To get associated with this Ramakrishna Sangha, as I said in the beginning of my talk, Ramakrishna Sangha is the family of people who have subscribed to Ramakrishna Bhavadhara. It is a family which is completely devoted to moksha and it is a family which is dev devoted to the welfare of the entire human race. Atmano Moksha Jagadhidayacha. So this is a very unique family. To get entry into this Sangha is more difficult than that. And the last point is Ramakrishna Sanghatma Bhava. To become fully identified with the activities of this beautiful Sangha is even more difficult. So three things which are extremely rare in this creation, I would say in the line of Bhagavan Sri Shankaracharya, that is Ramakrishna Bhakti. Durlabham to Ra Ra Ramakrishna Rag Bhakti Bhavanam. Swami Virjananda says in his one of his totras, Ramakrishna Bhakti is Durlabham. Ramakrishna Rag is Durlabham and Ramakrishna Bhava is Durlabham. It is not that easy. So, this devotion for Sri Ramakrishna, 
and then getting associated with Ramakrishna Sangha and finally becoming fully identified with Ramakrishna Sangha's activities is the rarest thing. Now why I am stating this, just imagine how fortunate we all are that we have some amount of devo devotion for Sri Ramakrishna, it may not be fully blazing devotion, at least some devotion we have. We all have connect, got connected with this great Sangha, which is a rare spiritual phenomenon and we are actively involved with the different activities run by the Ramakrishna Bhatt and Mission. So in this way, my dear devotees, I want all of you to feel this intensely that it is a great good fortune Today morning, uh, uh, revered uh, Subhiranand Ji Maharaj, in his talk, he was talking about Ramakrishna's eternal call. He has called all of us. <coughs> he has called, come, come. That is why, if these three things are happening, we should remember, it is happening by Sri Ramakrishna's grace and anugraha. If we have come here to this great, rare spiritual phenomenon, it is owing to Ramakrishna's eternal call. So how blessed we are, how fortunate we are that we have become a part of this unique spiritual organization. So we have to see to it that as a devotee of this great personality called Ramakrishna, we should remember its ultimate ideal is this great principle of Atmano Mokshartham and Jagat Hitayacha. We are a family which is dedicated to the ideal of moksha on the one side and working for the well-being of the entire human race. Thank you so much.